Thank you. I had the privilege of being brought up in a Christian home. My parents, though from Australia, had separately moved to India in order to tell people about Jesus and to show them God's love. They had met there and moved back to India, uh, India after getting married, and I and my two brothers had, were born and spent our childhood in India. From the very beginning, my parents taught me about God. I was taught that he had made the world, that he was rightfully in charge and made us to be in loving relationship with him and to look after the world under his leadership. I was also taught that humanity had rebelled against God's rule, believing the lies that true life and knowledge of good and evil, right and wrong, can be found apart from God. Trying to run the world without listening to God brought all of humanity and the world under a curse and on a path to death and decay. Not only that, but God, being just, could not leave this rebellion unpunished, but has declared that the consequences of this rebel of rebellion against him, their loving ruler and maker, is death and judgment. I was six years old when I remember understanding that as things stood, I also was under God's judgment and would one day face death and God's eternal punishment. But it was also at that age that I came to understand the wonderful news that because of God's amazing love for us, he sent his son, Jesus, to become a man, to live a perfect life, and then to die in the place of all of humanity, a death that he didn't deserve because he never rebelled against God. And that through Jesus, our punishment has been paid and we can be forgiven and have our relationship with God restored. And better yet, God raised Jesus to life again as ruler and judge of the world, and so that we could have eternal life. And so it was at six years old that I prayed asking God to forgive me for rebelling against him and trusted in Jesus' death on my behalf so that I could be in relationship with God and have the hope of eternal life with him after death. As I grew older, I learnt more through the Bible and the teaching of my parents about God and what it meant to be in relationship with him and to live as his child, not ignoring him and running life my own way, but listening to what he said was good and seeking to do that. I remember when I was 13, there were some Christians in other parts of India that were being persecuted for their trust in Jesus. There were churches being burnt. Christians being attacked and killed, and their property and houses being destroyed. My parents knew that one of the risks of being a Christian, and especially actively seeking to teach people about Jesus, was that this could happen. But they also discussed with us as a family that if we do face suffering because of Jesus, that God calls us to forgive those who hurt us. This is something that Jesus told his disciples to do, to forgive those who hurt us, because we as Christians have experienced God's immense forgiveness of us in pardoning our eternal debt we owed him because of our rebellion. And I distinctly remember my mum saying that the Christians in that part of India needed to forgive those who were hurting them. Little did we know that less than a month later, we would be called on to put this into practice. In January 1999, my dad and two brothers were at a village 250 kilometres away, where they were helping to run a camp for the churches in the area to train and uh, encourage the local Christians. On the night of January 22nd, a mob of Hindu fundamentalists burned the jeep my dad and two brothers were sleeping in and prevented anyone from rescuing them. These people were enraged that locals in the area were becoming Christians and were convinced that they were being coerced by my dad into becoming Christians by bribes and inducements. They thought that if they got rid of the foreign missionary, my dad, these local people would no longer have any reason to follow Jesus and would return to Hinduism. 
This, of course, was not the case. And while my father was involved in caring for persons affected by leprosy and helping many in the area who were sick and suffering, he never offered bribes or inducements for people to become Christians. Those that did turn to follow Jesus did so because they came to understand the love and forgiveness that God offered them through Jesus, something that was told and demonstrated to them by my parents and other Christians. When mum and I heard the news early on the 23rd morning, everyone was watching to see how we would respond. When mum told me that they were in fact dead and not just missing, she said, but we will forgive them, won't we? And I responded, yes. Understanding that we are called by God to forgive those who killed my dad and brothers because we know that we have been forgiven by God. The watching world expected anger and a desire for revenge. But we knew that ultimately God is the just judge who will repay those who do evil. And so we, as God's people, are freed up from needing to seek revenge or to seek to be judge and get our own justice. As a result of our unexpected response, we were thrown into the international spotlight as everybody wanted to know why. Why do we forgive instead of seeking revenge? And our answer was always because Jesus died and rose again so we could be forgiven for our wrongdoing or rebellion. And so we entrust ourselves to God who judges justly and offers forgiveness to those who trust and listen to Jesus. Over the following months and years, I have had to remind myself of this and to live out the consequences. Those who did this to my family were eventually arrested and convicted of their murders and sentenced initially to death and then their sentences commuted to life imprisonment. For us, this was about allowing the authorities of India to do their job and to bring justice according to the law of the land. And we were not going to interfere with this, recognizing that all human authority and leadership is put there by God to maintain order and to suppress evil. Although, of course, we know that no earthly authority is perfect. But through all of this process, we were praying for those who did this, that they would come to understand the forgiveness that is offered by God through Jesus. That even as they faced imperfect earthly justice for their crimes, they would understand the much more terrifying, perfect, eternal justice they would face from God after death and would take the offer from God and come to know God and his love as we did. This continues to be my prayer for them, that they would come to know God's love and accept the offer of forgiveness and new life offered through Jesus. Forgiving my dad, uh, sorry, forgiving those who killed my dad and brothers, of course, hasn't spoke, taken away the consequences and impacts of this on my life. I missed my dad at my wedding. I miss having my dad there to meet and love my children, his grandchildren, and my brothers to be there as friends, brothers-in-law to Reuben, my husband, and uncles to my children. The impact of the trauma on my mum and I continues to linger in subtle everyday ways. And yet forgiving them means that we are not consumed by bitterness. And in our hurt and grief, we continue to find comfort in God's love and the hope of eternal life. The hope after death of living in the perfect new world God will make, where we will again see my dad and brothers, and there will be no longer any suffering or pain or death. And this hope and forgiveness is something that I want everyone to know for themselves. Thank you. What impact has forgiveness had on your life and on, on you as a person? Uh, so I think, as I mentioned, uh, one, it 
big impact has meant that I'm not consumed by wanting to, to get justice. I'm not consumed by wanting uh, those that did this to, um, to get what they deserve. I can just get on with living my life. Um, uh, yeah, so being freed from, from bitterness. Um, sorry, what was the second part? You said, what impact has it had on my life? And the second part of the question, I forgot. <laughs> on you, uh, impact on you as a person. Yeah. Um, and I think as part of not being consumed by bitterness and forgiving, I come to understand more deeply God's forgiveness of me uh, also. And then I'm free to love those around me. I'm free, yeah, to love those who are like me, love those who are not, are not like me. Um, yeah. uh, what a life in India uh, looked after this uh, uh, event. They, were they more willing to accept people that believe in Jesus? Or how was your life uh, with your mom in India after this? Mm. Um, I think in some ways, uh, because what happened was very widely internationally condemned, um, and the goodness of, of the humanitarian work that my dad was doing, uh, was recognized. Um, there was some increased sort of national acceptance of it initially, um, Having said that, uh, Christians in India, I think, uh, continue to suffer for their faith um, and perhaps more so now than they did then. Um, as for the impact on us personally, we never actually really felt under threat uh, before this happened. Um, in some ways, this was, although something that we knew was a risk, um, we weren't expecting it per se. And so it was a, a surprise. Um, and we never really felt particularly under threat after. Uh, however, the government wanting to be seen to be doing the right thing, uh, they provided security for my mum uh, and myself. So when I was at home, uh, life was a little more restricted. We couldn't move around as freely. We had to have someone with us all the time. Um, uh, and there was a lot more media attention. Um, my mum was asked to go and speak uh, at lots of different places. Uh, I myself, I was at boarding school about 2000 kilometers away. So in many ways, when I was at school, life went on as normal. Um, it was just when I was at home with my mum that things were very different in India itself. And the question is, do you think it's possible for someone to forgive if they haven't been forgiven themselves? That's a very good question. Um, I don't think... I think someone who doesn't know the forgiveness of God of them uh, they might try to forgive if, if God by his spirit has, uh, like the Bible talks about God, um, uh, some who don't know the forgiveness of Christ, uh, understanding some of the goodness that God intends. Um, but I don't think unless someone truly knows the forgiveness of Jesus, that they would be able to fully forgive um, uh, although uh, there would be some that would try. Thank you. Uh, what is your advice to those who sh struggle with forgiveness? What is the first step for believers and non-believers? I think for the believer, the first step would simply be to pray and ask God to help them to understand more deeply the forgiveness that they've received uh, and to strengthen them to uh, to forgive um, because God as his spirit uh, through his spirit changes us um, and enables us uh, to to want to do and to do the good that he wants us to do uh, and I always think of I think it was Corrie ten Boom when she met 
one of the uh, soldiers who was involved in killing her family. Um, as, as she lifted her hand, uh, she said, uh, she prayed that God would help her to feel the forgiveness that she wanted to offer. And as she shook his hand, God enabled that, that love to flow through. So I think for the believer, Christian uh, prayer would be the first step uh, and reminding themselves of the forgiveness in Christ. Um, I, I think for the non-believer, I wouldn't know how to approach it. The only thought I have perhaps is as believers are speaking of the forgiveness we have in Christ and speaking of the benefits of forgiveness in terms of being freed from bitterness and being freed to move on with life perhaps might be, uh, might be the beginning step of making forgiveness an attractive option for non-believers. Uh, but I think it would have to be at the same time as explaining the reason that we as believers can forgive is because of the forgiveness we've received. And so part mm -hmm. of encouraging non-believers to forgive would also be speaking to them of the forgiveness that they can receive from God. It was also how to explain the importance of forgiveness. Um, I guess it would be simply uh, looking at the consequences of those who don't forgive. Um, and those that don't forgive is when it results in like tribal wars and or uh, clan infighting um, and that sort of thing. Um, there's lots of examples throughout history and across the world of the results when communities and people don't forgive each other. They result in their life is constantly at war with those who have hurt them. Whereas when, for, yeah, the importance of forgiveness is it brings healing. It brings restoration of relationship. Is Christian forgiveness instantaneous or is it process uh, requiring work? I think both. Um, and it would vary from person to person. Uh, for us in God's kindness, um, our initial response, it was instantaneous and that came out of uh, already understanding uh, God's forgiveness of us and the importance of therefore forgiving everyone, anyone who hurts us. But at the same time, it is, it is a process because it's something that you have to continue to work to work through. It's something you have to continue to choose to do. Uh, I guess in some ways, uh, yeah. So I remember that was our initial response, but then about two weeks later, I was on the train returning home, uh, back to school, sorry, and was reading a magazine that had the story of what had happened in there. And there was a picture on the front page of, one of the main accused who had done this. Uh, and I remember feeling initially anger <laughs> and uh, being very upset at what he had done. Uh, and then I went, no, I have said I will forgive. Forgiveness needs to be my response. And um, so I, I prayed and asked God to help me to work that through and reminding myself again of the forgiveness I have in Christ enabled me to then move from anger again to feeling forgiveness. Um, yeah. Does forgiveness mean uh, normalizing the relationship with the ones who have wronged you or us? I think that's a very good question. Um, so forgiveness uh, I mean, I'm, I'm not an expert on the theology of forgiveness, but having said that, forgiveness is about uh, not seeking revenge, not seeking uh, to get back at them, but in a, in a situation where there is perpetual hurt, where someone is continually hurting you, um, I think there is wis godly wisdom in... Uh, not allowing them to continue to do what is wrong. And so in some situations, I think there is a place for, uh, for 
calling out a damaging relationship, for calling out hurt, it doesn't mean that you say that what someone has done is okay. Forgiveness doesn't justify the wrong. Um, in fact, forgiveness is saying what you have done is wrong. Um, but I am choosing that to be forgiving towards you rather than bitter. Um, but it doesn't mean necessarily that you allow them to continue to do that if they are unrepentant. Um, true restoration of relationship requires the other person to repent as well, I think. But that's very complicated. It would depend on the situation. It would require uh, counselling and wisdom, I think. Did everyone understood why did you forgave people who give your father and brothers? Did they accept, for example, people you know in Australia, how did they react? There were certainly lots of people who did not understand. Um, and I think our family being mostly believers, they did understand. Um, but there were people that thought that we were doing the wrong thing, that thought that by forgiving, we were letting them get away with what they had done. Um, but I think for those people, it was not fully understanding what forgiveness means because forgiveness is a word that is used by lots of people and people mean different things by that. Um, but I think the understanding of forgiveness that comes from the Bible is one of recognizing if we think of God's response to us, he doesn't say that our, our wrongdoing against him is, uh, is nothing. Uh, forgiveness involves uh, calling out and calling the wrongdoing for what it is, that it is wrong, but out of uh, love, choosing to forgive that. Uh, and of course, with God, he paid for the consequences of that. Um, and then restoration of relationship only happens as repentance uh, and the person seeks to change. Um, so, yes, I think because of misunderstanding about what forgiveness is um, and also the inability for people to, uh, yeah, people thought that forgiveness was not something that should be offered in such a, a big uh, situation like that when someone has killed our family. Um, yeah, so mixed responses. Some understood, some did not. Uh, what to do if people are constantly hurting you and how to draw the line? That is a, uh, yes, that is a good question. Um, I would say that in a, in a situation like that, um, forgiveness can be offered and forgiveness is about, about a heart uh, attitude. Um, but there is part of loving someone I think is taking away their opportunity to do wrong if they continue to do the wrong thing. So I think there is good wisdom in drawing the line um, in, a, in a loving way, not being bitter, seeking to still uh, offer a relationship if the person is willing to change what they're doing. Um, but uh, yeah, so forgiveness would not being bitter would be being still willing to restore relationship, but that being dependent on the, the party that is hurting them, recognizing that what they are doing is wrong and that they need to change. Did you ever go back to India and continue the work there after you moved back to Australia? And do you still have contact with them? Uh, we still have contact with them. Uh, we have been back to visit uh, the work continues to be done by local believers. Um, we stayed in India for five years after, uh, after the event. Um, this was partly while I finished my schooling. Um, but no, we haven't been back to work there since we left. Uh, but we have been back to visit. We continue in contact and we continue to support uh, through prayer um, and encouraging others uh, to financially support the work there. If you imagine a world where you never forgave or compare it to reality, how much more good came out of your decision than it would if you come to the bitterness? 
I think a lot more good. Um, I wouldn't be the person I am if I had chosen, if we had not forgiven. Um, I don't think we could have stayed in India. Um, and certainly we would not have had the opportunities to speak of the forgiveness that we have received from God if we had not forgiven. It was only because our response was to forgive uh, in a sense that everybody continued to want to ask why and to continue to want to know. Um, and so we were able to say because of Jesus. Um, so, and I think as a result of that also, there were many who, who non-believers who went, well, if, if that's the message of Jesus, I want to know this Jesus. And so there have been people who have come to trust in Jesus um, as a result of this. And I don't, that would not have happened if we had not forgiven. Um, so life would be very different and many would not know Christ um, if that had not happened. If you have sought to uh, say sorry to him, uh, you need to remember that ultimately you are forgiven and you have repented to God, that ultimately it is God that God has forgiven you. Um, it is painful and uh, I think it is hard if you've wronged someone and they are not yet in a position to fully forgive. Um, uh, I guess I would probably, if I was in that situation, I would keep coming back to God and asking him, uh, firstly, to continue to help me to do the right thing. Um, and, but also that he would change his heart, uh, to be able to truly forgive. Um, when wrongdoing is done, it does damage relationship. And it can take time for that to heal. Uh, because I think even if the person is willing to forgive, it can take time for them to, uh, to be able to trust again, to restore that trust in the relationship. Um, and so I would seek to continue to be faithful and to do the right thing uh, in relationship with whoever that was. Uh, but ultimately we can't change people's hearts. And so we have to entrust that to God and to continue to come back to God and ask him to strengthen us uh, even when relationship is not restored as quickly as we would like. Thank you. It's been lovely to have the opportunity to share and to, to talk with you. Thank you. And, uh, God bless you.